but it did turn out that in some way it, it you know it was about being here where we live in this place and, you know my studio looks out on these woods and you know and that's obviously part of what I'm seeing and responding to yeah where we live the natural world is very present there you know we go to sleep listening to the owls and we have animals in our house outside our house <laughs> I had just been reading Emerson literally I had just reread Emerson's wonderful essay nature where he's talking about the American landscape as a source of aesthetic and ethical and um, philosophical um, source of inspiration as well as nation building but so those ideas were in the back of my mind um, I was also reading a lot of Wallace Stevens mm -hmm. and um, so I was thinking a lot about the role of the imagination and nature so Gert, you look yeah I, I, I wasn't thinking about those things I was thinking about you know the natural world and the man-made world mm -hmm. and and the way they you know do and don't work together mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah, that kind of thing I mean I, I, I you know the, the, the I keep remembering um, the American artist Charles Biederman, who lived out in Red Wing, Minnesota, up a mountain, and, and in a very isolated place, and claimed to go up the mountain every morning and sit there for a while contemplating mm -hmm. the way the natural world changed. And, and he'd done this for many, many years. And I remember a remark he made to me on one of my visits to him about New York, where he'd spent some time. He'd gone to Paris, he grew up in Chicago, but at some point he, he, he I don't know how anybody thinks they can make art in New York, you know, it's a completely man-made world, you've got to confront an order that is not man-made, and I still think about this, you know, there's an order that's not man-made, you know, um, so I mean, these are the things I was thinking you know, I just think people have a lot more capacity to do creative things than they often give themselves permission to do. Mm -hmm. And I certainly felt that um, I had managed with Garth's help and because of the luck of having a fellowship and being able to take a little time off from work to, to, to um, give myself permission to just do something I might not have thought possible a couple of years earlier. And that was really energizing. And our, the people who saw the work that summer you know, it gave them a lot of energy, and we thought, wow, this would be exciting to publish. And then when we went down the road of publishing it, we realized there was a strong um, response to the environment that we wanted to capture and be part of it as well. And so I mean, we call that the kind of environmental ethos of the project. But.